So today we're going to be going over uh, window and door properties. Um, so windows and doors have very similar properties. So we'll go through uh, doors first and then we'll kind of show some of the different ones that you might encounter in windows. Um, but there is a lot of overlap there. So I'm just going to create a, a generic wall there and I'm going to throw a door in there and then I will throw a window in there. Um, we're just going to use the, we'll use a, a standard fixed window there. So what I, what we've got here for doors, um, once we've got, got this placed in, so this is your, this is a single two panel wood door that I've loaded in here. Um, there's also the, the standard default that comes in that's just a flush, uh, flush door. They might have slightly different um, properties, but for the most part, they're going to be about the same. So, um, so what we've got here is our constraints, just like walls or any other component. Um, what level is it on? So we're on floor plane level one. I placed it when I was on level one. So the default is that it is on level one. Um, the sill height is zero. So this is sitting on the floor. If you have an exterior door or something that has a threshold and maybe you want to give it a little bit of relief to the actual floor level, you could punch that in and give it, say, like an inch and a half um, threshold, something like that. Um, so if you want to change the sill height, you can. Um, frame type, so this, it, it's just a pull down. It's, you can type in whatever frame type and that'll, that's a uh, schedulable um, uh, field here. So if you have metal frame, if you have a wood frame, um, if you have varying different types uh, of um, material that you're using throughout the project, you can put that in your door schedule. That way uh, you, the different types can all be identified separately because you might have a 36 inch by 80, 80 inch wood uh, frame. You might also have a 36 inch by 80 inch metal frame. So uh, that just gives you the chance to punch in um, some identifying data there. Uh, materials and finishes. Uh, this is not where you would apply a render appearance or certain material in that sense. Um, you can basically put in the frame material. So if up here it say, says frame type, um, you could have wood frame um, or metal frame. And then the frame material, you could have maybe the the material is maybe this is an oak door, maybe this is a cherry door, or something like that, um, or aluminum, steel, all that sort of thing. Uh, you can enter here, um, as is with the finish. Is it painted? Is it stained? Is it um, anything else? Um, if you have an image of the actual door itself, you can upload that. Any additional comments you can put in there as well. Uh, the mark. So when you tag your doors, uh, so maybe this is entering into room 201, you could punch in the mark of 201. So then when you go to tag the door, it'll show up um, as door number 201. And then when you schedule it, it'll have that mark as well. Um, the phase create, phase demolished, um, that's just, a, a, just like it sounds. Um, if this is an existing door, we can say it's existing. Um, and if it's being demoed, we can say, okay, it's being demoed as part of new construction. Um, and it will show up or not show up depending on the phasing uh, view properties of the view that we're in here. Um, so the head height, uh, a lot of times your sill height is less what matters and the head height is what you're looking for because maybe you're trying to keep a consistent line across the outside or the inside of a project. Um, this comes into play, especially with windows. Um, so m your sill heights might jump up and down, whether you got countertops underneath them or not, uh, but your head heights, you wanna keep consistent across the entire thing. So instead of creating a sill height, you could just punch in and say, actually, I want the head height to be say seven foot. So I can punch in seven foot. It'll automatically change my sill height to whatever it needs to be. Um, both of those are tied together. So if I decide I don't want four inches of sill height, I can make that zero again and it'll jump that back to six foot eight. Um, getting into the edit type properties uh, is where a lot of 
a lot more is kind of housed in this. So if you recall um, in walls, uh, I mentioned, or if you have not seen that video, the properties out here. So everything that I do in this window here affects just this door. So this door alone is being affected by what I place here, the mark, the head height, all of that sort of stuff. Everything I do in edit type, <coughs> excuse me, is affecting every single single flush 36 inch by 80 inch door that is in my project. So anything I change here is going to affect not just this door, but every single one of this type of door. So that's the type property as opposed to just a property. So getting into the type properties, um, so we can set a, whether it's an interior or an exterior function, um, the wall closure, uh, we can override how the wall closure works. Normally you set that up within the wall type itself, but you may want to, which is why it defaults to by host, but if you want to override how that wall works and how maybe the exterior finish works for this particular door, um, you can you can say whether you want interior or exterior or both um, and kind of scroll through those to get a different look for how it interacts with the actual wall layers itself. Um, construction type, uh, it's another, another type of just enter text field where you can type something in and have that be uh, a schedulable um, field. Um, so this is where you can actually apply materials to the door itself for renderings and the overall look of it in the uh, in your project file. So if I want to change the door material I can click on this and then select the dot dot dot. It opens the material editor and I can change to whatever I happen to want it to be. Um, same goes for the frame material around it. Uh, then we get into our, all of our dimensions, so what makes up the 36 inch by 80 inch is the width, so the 3 foot down here, and then the height, the 6 foot 8. Um, but then we also can say, okay, the trim projection on the outside, uh, the trim projection on the inside, uh, the trim width, and the thickness of the door itself. So the default is 2 inches. Um, you might want an inch and three quarters door. You might have an inch and three eighths door. Um, you can change all that, and when you apply that, it changes the look of the actual graphic um, to match. So you can also input as a as a text field um, the rough width and height. So whether the door is kind of standard and utilizes kind of standard practices for what the rough openings want to be or whether it requires a little bit extra um, for you know various security measures or something like that where you need a little bit of extra width or height um, depending on what you're doing around it you can input that information here and then have that show up in the schedule um, for the people on site to know that okay the rough width and and height openings that I need for this door. They more care about this than what the actual door itself is when they're framing it. <clears throat> the analytical properties, um, I'm not going to touch on that too much. That's basically how does this door impact um, your your kind of analysis models within, within Revit. Uh, there's all sorts of, this is more impacted by what material you're actually using and if you have a material applied to it, um, there's always this identity data and stuff like that that you can um, you can get into how how the analytical properties of this end up working. <coughs> um, so then identity data, uh, we've got assembly code. So this could be your um, your kind of spec number uh, that you know reference the spec in and it shows up under this. There could be a, a keynote, um, model number, a manufacturer, uh, any sort of other comments you happen to have. Um, if there's a manufacturer's website you want to tie to it, you can. A description, if this door has a fire rating, you can put, plug that in. And what the cost of this door is, you can put that in there. Um, doors, it's not very often that you'll see somebody use a type mark for doors because normally the you use a mark for the doors because they simply have the 
the room number and more their location identity tied to a, a mark rather than a type mark. But this can be he helpful um, when you do like an ordering schedule or something like that. You could have a type mark associated with a, a 36 inch by 80 inch half hour or say hour and a half fire rated door. Um, you could have that be type mark two and then do a separate ordering schedule that says we need 14 of exactly this type of door um, and then you can schedule by type mark rather than actual mark where you end up with every single door broken out separately. Um, this can be helpful for just quantities of what type of door uh, you've got in there. So then there's there's some uh, kind of the operation. This is another uh, you can input information and text field into it. So a lot of this is just kind of text fields and any identity data that you want to plug in for that particular door. So I'll hit OK. Um, and that pretty much runs through most of the stuff that goes with a like kind of a standard door. Uh, similarly with windows, you have your sill height, you've got your head height, um, you've got your level constraint, image, comments, your mark, phasing, uh, all the same as what you've got with a door. If I hit my edit type, um, I've got my wall closure construction type, all the same stuff where I input my materials for the glass and the sash. So if you wanted, you know, obscured glass, um, glass block, that sort of thing, you can um, change that out here. Uh, you've got your dimensions. They've got default sill height. You've got window inset. So your window inset. Um, I'm not a big fan of this window inset that they've created. It's almost... Uh, not to throw anybody under the bus, but it's almost like they haven't they haven't really thought about how the inset actually actually works in relation to the wall. So I would have thought that a window inset would be great when I actually initially saw this. I thought this was perfect for brick walls where the window doesn't extend all the way out. You've actually got you know a, it sits back in the wall, so it doesn't actually extend out to be flush with the face of the brick. That's what I thought this was going to be, but instead it ends up just moving basically the location of the glass pane back and forth, but the actual sash itself still extends out to even with the face of the wall. So um, we'll eventually get into creating custom windows. I've gone in and actually made my own uh, custom windows for brick and stone kind of walls so that way this doesn't end up being flush it actually sits back and I get that side of the brick or stone um, wrapping back to meet the to meet the window itself um, but if you ever want to kind of adjust where it shows the the actual like kind of window pane um, at that is what the window inset does um, rough openings uh, same as with doors and everything down here is basically the same as what you've got with doors so that is a brief little run through of uh, windows and doors and their properties and type properties.